Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Author Trivia. Bob News, the coordinator, has asked me to do the introduction today. My name is Anna, and I'm, I work at the Hopewell branch, and today it's mystery authors. For those of you who have done this before, you know the drill. If, it's this, if this is your first time doing it, um, what you want to do is you'll play the video. The authors are going to ask a trivia question. You can pause it, think of the answer, and then unpause it, and the authors will reveal the answer. So, here we go. Best of luck to you. Hi, my name is Jane Willen, and I'm the author of the Sister Agatha and Father Selwyn mystery series, which is right behind me, The Hour of Death and The Shadow of Death. But today, I have a mystery question from Abide With Me, which is the third in the mystery series. And if you'll notice, there's a beautiful Shetland pony on the front on the cover of the book. So my mystery question is, what is the name of the Shetland pony? The name of the pony is Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus is a biblical name, and it really describes the pony, which you'll find out if you read the book. Hi, I'm Marty Wingate, author of the first edition library mystery series set in Bath, England, and concerning a collection of rare and first editions from the golden age of mystery, mostly the women authors. In book one, The Bodies in the Library, New curator Haley Burke had a problem. She'd never read a detective story in her life. But now in book two, Murder is a Must, which came out in December of 2020, Haley has gained some ground and she has organized a series of literary salons on the subject. Haley and Val, her boyfriend, are waiting in a cafe for the lecturer, the first lecturer to arrive. But this trivia question has nothing to do with that. It has to do with one of Haley's great loves, and that's tea and cake, or coffee and cake. Tea and a biscuit, coffee and a roll, anything along those lines. So, at the beginning of Murder is a Must, Haley and Val are waiting somewhere. Having uh, Haley's having a bath bun and coffee. They're waiting for their lecture. The trivia question is, where are they in Bath waiting for the lecture? I'll count to almost five and let you think about that. Right, give up? They were in the pump room. The pump room is the cafe attached to the Roman baths in the World Heritage City of Bath. And if you've ever visited, you've probably been in there. And if you haven't visited, you should. And by all means, stop in the pump room for a bath bun. So thanks so very much to Mercer County Library Systems and to Bob, Mystery Trivia with Bob, for letting me uh, give you a question. Thanks. Bye. Hi there, my name is Stephanie Pintoff and I'm the author of um, Hostage Taker, which is a contemporary thriller set in New York City at the iconic St. Patrick's Cathedral. Even though it's contemporary, um, I drew on history in a couple of different ways, um, one being St. Patrick's Cathedral itself with all its hidden rooms and secret passageways, tunnels, and hidden graffiti. But the other was a 200-year-old story about a criminal who was essentially offered a get out of jail free card if he would just turn his talents from a life of crime to a life solving it. He began helping out the police and today he's credited with several strategies that are hallmarks of detective work, like going undercover or recognizing that every criminal has a certain signature or MO. He was so good that he became chief of police himself. And when he handpicked, the people that he wanted to be on his most elite unit. He didn't look to the department itself. He went back onto the streets and chose criminals just like himself, literally embodying the idea that sometimes it takes a thief to catch a thief. My question for you is, who is this famous detective? And the answer is Eugene Vidoc, who was a forger, thief, and master of disguise. Uh, for Hostage Taker, I took him as my inspiration for my VDOC unit, trying to reimagine what the modern day counterpart of VDOC might look like in the FBI. Um, who would this team be made up of? You know, what kind of diverse characters? What kind of unique skills would they have? Unique backgrounds? 
And most important, how would they all get along and work together with a unique case? Um, would they like each other or would they barely be able to stand being in the same room with each other? I enjoyed spending time with these characters when I was writing Hostage Taker, and I hope you enjoy spending time with them too if you decide to check it out. Be safe and well. Hey everyone, my name is Katherine Bruns. I'm the USA Today bestselling author of The Cookies and Chants, Italian Chef, and the Cindy York Real Estate Mysteries. Many thanks to Bob from the Hopewell branch of the Mercer County Library for inviting me here today. My most recent release is It Can Only Be Murder. It's the second book in the Italian Chef Mysteries. It was preceded by Penny Dreadful. And the next book is called The Enemy Unoki, and it's coming out on October 26th of this year. So my question today relates to the Italian Chef Mysteries. The main character, Tessa Esposito, has recently just realized her lifelong dream of opening her own Italian restaurant. What is the name of that Italian restaurant? And while you think about it for a second, I'm just going to look through here. Oh, it's a cold day and some warm recipes such as bolognese sauce and cannoli, cinnamon chip biscotti. Ooh, sounds good. Okay, ready? The name of Tessa's Italian restaurant is called Anything's Possible. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hi, I'm Connie Berry, author of the Kate Hamilton Mystery Series, set in the UK and featuring an American antique stealer with a gift for solving crimes. Thank you to Bob News and the Mercer County Library System for inviting me to play Author Trivia. My second book is called A Legacy of Murder. Kate travels to Long Marston in Suffolk, where her daughter Christine has an internship between terms at Finchley Hall, a crumbling Elizabethan stately home, famous for the discovery in 1818 of a fabulous Anglo-Saxon treasure trove known as the Finchley Hoard. So here's my question. Kate's daughter, Christine, gives the handsome young rector of St. Ethelric's Church a nickname, which Kate can't get out of her mind, and she's worried that she's going to use it in his presence. What is that nickname? I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, the answer is the Dishy Vicar. Hi, I'm Shelley Noble, and I'm the author of the Lady Dunbridge Gilded Age Manhattan Mystery Series. This is my latest book, A Resolution at Midnight. Lady Dunbridge is a young dowager countess who left England to make her fortune in America. Little did she expect that that would be solving murders, but special murders, one that need finesse, discretion, and impeccable drawing room manners. In a resolution at midnight, it's the Christmas season in Manhattan. And it's also the year of the very first Times Square New Year's Eve ball descent. Everyone is very excited. Lady D, also known as Phil to her friends, comes home from shopping one morning only to discover a note that says, meet at a certain place at two o'clock. She's running late, so she rushes out to make the rendezvous. My question to you is, where does she go? If you think that it was to the Times building, not yet. Where she actually goes is the Teatro Unique, which is a Nickelodeon on 14th Street near the um, Union Square. Unfortunately, she's late, and when she gets there, the person she was to meet is quite dead. So she makes her resolution at that moment, find the culprit and before the clock strikes midnight. So I hope you'll join Lady D and me in her latest adventure, A Resolution at Midnight. And thanks for having me. Hi, thanks for joining us at our trivia contest. My name is Susan Cox and I'm the author of the Theo Bogart Mysteries. The first one was called The Man on the Washing Machine. And the most recent one, is the man in the microwave oven. That's this one. So I'm going to ask you a question about something that happens in the book. It's a simple question. I think you'll get the answer. Theo, 
adopts a small dog when she moves to San Francisco. Can you tell me her name? I'll give you a second or two to think about it or look it up. Okay, time's up. Theo's dog is called Lucy and she's a small bad tempered representative of her canine gene pool. I hope you enjoy the book and I hope you enjoy the trivia. See you again. Bye bye. Hello, my name is Maya Corrigan. I write the five ingredient mysteries featuring a young woman who runs a cafe and caters on the side and her live wire grandfather solving murders on the eastern shore of Maryland near the Chesapeake Bay. The series is call, uh, called the Five Ingredient Mystery Series because each book has five suspects, five clues, and granddad's five ingredient recipes. The Vedas book is the seventh in the series. It is called Ginger Dead Man. It is a holiday mystery. Val and Grandad are taking part in the Dickens of a Holiday Festival in their town of Bayport. They have volunteered to dress as Victorians and to each of them do a little job. Val, for example, is serving English teas all throughout the day. And Grandad is playing the part of Scrooge, greeting visitors to the town with a bah humbug. At the end of the day, Val is holding a tea for the volunteers who have spent all day in costumes, greeting visitors and trying to make the festival a success. Among the people who show up are some who are dressed like Dickens characters. For example, Grandad as Scrooge, there's the ghost of Christmas present, and also Santa and Mrs. Claus, as well as Miss Havisham and Madame Defarge and other Dickens characters. An uninvited guest shows up though, dressed in black from top to toe so that you cannot see the, the, per, the person's face and goes around handing out a little gift at each place at the table and leaves without a word. Santa is the first person to open the gift that was left there and he finds there a cookie but it's not an ordinary cookie he thinks it's a gingerbread man but it's actually a ginger dead man with skeleton bones outlined in icing this is a very off-putting cookie to find at a dickens of a holiday festival but it doesn't put grand it doesn't put santa off because he is a cookie lover and he chomps down the ginger dead man and you know what happens next. The trivia question that I have is which of the ghosts in A Christmas Carol does the intruder most resemble? The answer is the ghost of Christmas yet to come, also known as the ghost of Christmas future, so he matches the ghost of Christmas past and the ghost of Christmas present. I want to thank the Hopewell branch of the Mercer County Public Library System for giving me a chance to introduce you to Ginger Dead Man, my latest book, and also my series, The Five Ingredient Mysteries. Well, how did you do? Hopefully, at the very least, you found some authors or titles that you're interested in reading. So we invite you to use our catalog at www.mcl.org, or we just launched a new app called My MCLS NJ, and you can find that in your app store and download it to your smartphone or your tablet. Also, if you want to share how you did or leave us a comment about the, the author trivia, Mercer County Library System is all over social media, so make sure you tag us at MCLSNJ. We also want to thank all the authors for their time that they took to submit their questions. It was thoroughly enjoyable. Thank you so much.